Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. All right, everybody, we're back uh, behind the vice, which is kind of fun for a change. Uh, so last week I did a trout bead setup for you guys. This week we're going to be hitting the flies. Um, so hopefully this gets the ball and rolling with those other guys up in Pemby. Uh, I'm calling you out, Scott and Brad and uh, Ethan and Scotty Holmes. Let's get this thing going again. Um, so yeah, happy uh, Canadian Thanksgiving, I should say. Sorry, I couldn't remember what it was called for a second there. Uh, so that was this past weekend. Um, I was out with a bunch of family. We we're camping in the, uh, not really camping, we we're at a cabin up by Mission, um, which is pretty close to the Stave River. Uh, pretty popular river, especially this time of year when the coho and the chum are rolling in. Um, so I was swinging this new fly. We'll uh, show you what that looks like in a sec here uh, for some chum. And they were crushing this thing. So I got into uh, two really, really nice ones in the little bit that we were there. Um, quite a few fish in there. Uh, I'll even pop it up on screen here um, just what it looks like in the water. So it's got a pretty nice flow to it. Um, moves really well in the water. Got some really aggressive takes. Uh, There's about a pod at one point, a little school of chum swimming around me. And I was swinging it over this log that they were kind of behind and uh, just started stripping it and I was up on the bank so I was able to sight fish them which is kind of cool and just strip, strip, strip. They were chasing this thing and just, just hammered it. So uh, as chum do, they are a lot of fun to fish for. So this is a good one to have in your arsenal. It's a pretty easy fly to tie I would say. It's got a stinger hook in the back. We're tying it on a shank. Um, it doesn't take much in the way of materials. It goes together pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, this one's called the chum dumpster. Let's uh, head on down and check it out. All right, you guys, so here it is, the Chum Dumpster in pink. This uh, it's a pretty deadly little fly, um, quite large as well. I think it's about four, three and a half to four inches in length. Um, you can make them as long or short as you like. Um, we've got the trailer hook there. You guys have seen me use this hook before. This is my favorite Chum hook, especially for stingers. It's a Maruto MS4310, size one in uh, hot pink. I picked these up at uh, Stillwater Sports. Uh, go see Jens there, he'll give you a, a good deal. Um, so we've attached that to a shank with 50 pound braid. You can use whatever you want. I just happen to have J braid. It was on sale one day. Um, roll of that's going to last you a lifetime of these flies. So let's, uh, looks kind of ugly because it's been chewed on. I was fishing this, this one on the weekend. That's what I was getting those, those chum on. Um, big nasty teeth. We'll, uh, Get that guy out of the way. Okay, well, let's get this guy going. So, I got some UTC 140 in purple. You can use 210 Danville. You can use whatever you want. Um, this is just what I had on my bobbin at the time. So that's why we're going with purple. And the one I had there, I was using pink. I don't think it really matters. All it's going to give you is a little hot spot at the front of the shank. So this is a fish skull articulation shank, 35 millimeter that we're tying on. And we're just going to close up that gap there, give it some nice snug wraps, make sure everything's nice and centered. And then we're going to take our thread all the way to the front. And we're going to put on our eyes. So a little we're going to leave a little bit of space there at the front. A little trick I've picked up off of watching some YouTube videos here. And the guys over at the Ashland Fly Shop, just create yourself a little bit of a bump. And then you create another little bump behind it. And now our Superfly Fly Eyes in Pearl, this is the medium size, can sit right in the middle of that little bump. And those aren't going to spin on you once we get this thing seated, which is kind of nice. So that's just going to help them to sit how we want. And a few good wraps either direction. Make sure that shank's nice and straight. Really lock them down. We don't have to go too crazy because we're going to attach our braid next. And this is another little trick that I've picked up recently. I've been doing this with my intruder wire and stuff like that. So I've cut off a few inches of braid here. And our loop is where our hook's going to go. I extend that about an inch or so off the back of the shank. I'm just going to tie this down with a couple wraps on top, wrap my way back. So this braid is sitting right on top. We want it 
there's a little bump here. We kind of want the braid to just kind of slightly split where that bump starts. Just so that our hook can sit nice and centered. Goodness, this is giving me a little trouble here. The joys of tying live. Let's see if I can get that back on there. There we go. That's kind of where I want it. Right on. So we're going to take our thread forward. Now, I used to take these two tag ends and feed them through the eye. Um, now what I've been kind of doing is I kind of take them, if you can see here, I'm going to wrap it around the eye. I'm going to pull it up underneath. This gets it nice and tight. Same with on the other side. It's nice and tight on there. And it stops the eyes from being able to move. So they're not going to move at all. So I'm just going to take this. I'm going to trim this braid basically where that little nub ends on the shank. There we go. Try to just fill in that gap a little bit. I'm really going to crank all this down. So I'm just going to leave my thread at the back of the hook shank. Alright. Just get everything sitting how I want. Now, I find with these eyes and the pseudo eyes and the lead eyes and all that kind of stuff is that they can either pop off or they start wearing out. So I'm just going to take some of this Solarez Ultra Thin UV Cure here. I'm just going to coat the eyes, coat underneath. Really kind of give everything a half decent coat there. And we're just going to zap it. The beauty of this stuff cures right away. Now those eyes are definitely not going anywhere on us. Now for our tail. So you can do this in whatever colors you want. I've got some Superfly Grizzly Rabbit in hot pink. Just in a standard zonker strip. It's kind of nice stuff. It gives a, it's pretty hot pink on the top and then it's got the dark underbody which is kind of nice. I'm just going to kind of measure this. It doesn't really matter too much. I'm just going to kind of part it. Part it with a needle kind of keeps things nice and perfect. Just kind of wet my fingers, create a nice part. And this is going to get tied in right on top here. And give us a good couple snug wraps. I'm going to pull that back. A couple wraps right in behind to kind of help prop it up. Now I'm going to trim this. So the hide, I'm going to trim it slightly longer than the uh, than the braid just to kind of make it a little easier to manage perfect so that's all I want right there now we're gonna add in a little underbody so just some ice dub UV purple you can use superfly diamond dub as well there's all sorts of different materials you can use I just like it just to add a little bit of extra flash there's not much flash on this fly which is kind of nice it's good to have a good variety. Like I said, I did this one in purple as well. So purple is the main component and then the pink accents. Um, I'll post that recipe alongside this one on our website for you guys. Because Chum do like purple and pink and all sorts of combinations. I was fishing the purple at the beginning of the day. We weren't getting anything. Um, then I switched over to the pink and it was literally the second cast I had one on. And then. Uh, my girlfriend's uncle was also fishing a little purple fly, and he was hooking into him as well on the spay, which was kind of cool. So there we go. Just a nice little purple underbody. Now, I'm going to pull this rabbit forward. I'm just going to kind of pluck off what I don't need. I'm going to lock this all down. I'm going to tie that in right on top. Some nice snug wraps. I'm even going to wrap back on this a little bit, so we got some materials to kind of cram in there. So right now, we're going to add a little shoulder on this, which is going to comprise of some uh, hot pink fox. So I'm just going to make a little dubbing loop. So 
So just pull some uh, thread out, stick my finger in it, loop it over the shank, wrap a couple times, then wrap around a couple times, and pull everything back. And I'm just gonna pull that forward. I got my dubbing twister here somewhere. There it is. I'm just gonna chuck that in the loop. I'm gonna take some of this hot pink fox here. Great material for um, intruders, intruder style flies. One of my favorites to work with. I've been picking this stuff up in all sorts of different colors the last couple of years. Speaking of intruders, as I'm parting this out, um, we're running intruder courses. So if you are interested, give us a call here at the store. They are free. We've got a bunch of material from Superfly. And uh, I'll teach you guys how to tie some intruders in a couple different ways. So I'm just going to take this fox here, throw a chunk here in the loop. You know what? Now that it's in, I'm just going to kind of poke it with my finger and kind of spread it out a little bit. You don't need a whole lot. Try to make this kind of want the main part of the fox here to come to the back of the purple. So kind of near, right where that bump in the uh, shank happens. That's kind of where I'm going to pull this to. I'm just going to kind of spread it out a little bit. Makes it a little easier to spin. I'll give this just a couple spins to kind of hold everything in place. I'm going to trim all these butts. So not super tight to the thread. So we want to add a little bit of bulk. And that's what's going to create our shoulder here. So I'm going to pinch this loop shut. I'm going to spin my dubbing spinner. And I'm just going to let it go. Do it again. Now I'm going to take my dubbing pick and just kind of pick all of this stuff out. Right on. Now I'm just going to palmer it all back. Hopefully that vice isn't moving too much on me here. I'm just going to create a nice little shoulder. It's a pretty easy fly. They go together fairly quickly. You're obviously, doing a tutorial, you're chatting away. It takes a little bit longer. So two routes behind to tie that off, two in front. And it's just starting to come together. Right on. So what I'm going to do now, I've got this uh, super fly schloppin' in hot pink, but it's barred, which is kind of cool. Kind of a grizzly style, which is kind of neat. I've seen this stuff around at a few shops. It's getting kind of hard to come by. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tie it in by the tip. So I'm just going to stroke back some of those fire fibers, create a little tie-in point. This I'm going to lock down right on top, really tie it in. I'm going to wrap back on that fox a little bit. Trim away the tip. A few little stray fibers there. I'm just gonna pull this all back. This is just gonna help. Oh, and there it pops off. Not the end of the world. Just create another little tie-in point. Some of these stems can be quite fragile. So I'll just stroke some fibers forward like so. Trim a little triangle into it. We're gonna lock that down. Again, again, just pull those fibers back. We're gonna wrap this. You can make this as full or as sparse as you like. I like to go a little bit fuller than I normally would. One, it adds a little bit of contrast to the fly. And uh, two, it helps to support this next stage that we're gonna put in. I'm just gonna get some of these fibers back here. One more wrap. There we go. And we're gonna lock this down. Couple nice snug wraps behind. Gonna pull everything back. A few wraps in front. So we're gonna trim that away. And this I'm gonna wrap back on. Now what we can do, if you have a brush or anything like that, you can kind of brush it forward a bit. And just kind of brush it back. See, that's a nice little shoulder there. It's gonna help keep some body to this fly. So now we're gonna add a little bit of highlights. So I've got some. Uh, Flashaboo here in Fuchsia, number 6995, it's holographic, which is pretty cool. We don't need to go too crazy here. 
I'm just going to add three strands on either side. So let me just get three pieces off of here. Right on. Now I'm going to tie these in so they make kind of like a, a shape kind of like that. It's kind of like a, an E or W, however you want to look at it. And I'm just going to tie in three on my side. Wrap forward a little bit, and get them oriented so they're kind of going straight back. We're going to adjust that in a second here. Sometimes be a little unruly. There we go. Now I'm going to take these other three, the other half, and pull them over to your side and just wrap back like so. so like I said, this is where we can kind of play with it. Where I'm just going to kind of splay them out a little bit, separate them. So they all kind of swim on their own plane. That's what we want. This is more for me than the fish, I think. I think they don't really care. You've heard me say it before. If the fish are thinking about this kind of stuff, then uh, we're all in trouble. So I'm going to tie this about the length of the tail. Now what I like to do is the one that's on top and the one that's on the bottom... I like to give them just a little trim so they're just a little bit shorter. This way everything's not the same length. They're not all uh, swimming together. They kind of all separate. That's the top one, trim you. That's the bottom one, trim that guy. Right on. So now we're going to do, you kind of lick your fingers and that kind of slicks everything back. There we go. So we're going to make another dubbing loop here. This one's going to be a little bit longer. And you've seen me do this before with the composite loops. If you haven't, check out my uh, composite loop sculpin or any of the videos from Jerry French or uh, I think I've done an intruder video as well with the composite loops. This is going to be quite an easy one. So I have my dubbing loop there. I'm going to take some of that same purple ice dub wherever I threw it here. I'm just going to grab a chunk. I'm just going to pull these fibers, just kind of even them all up. I'm going to squish them all together. Again, kind of pull them. Just so they're kind of a, all roughly the same length. And I'm going to rip it. Now it's about half the size. I'm just going to splay this out on the table here. So I'm going to make it fairly sparse. You should be able to see right through it all. And then I'm going to take some of this uh, barred ostrich. This is the OPST ostrich. Uh, this one's in purple. You can use the straight colors as well. I like to find the ones that have these very fine um, fibers to them. I find they just flow really, really nice in the water. So I'm going to take about an inch or so of fibers. It doesn't have to be too crazy. And all this really does is add some contrast, a little bit of more movement to the fly. So I'm just going to kind of gather them all up here, roughly align all the tips, and just trim it away from the stem. Like so. And then I'm just going to pop them right on top of this, this pile of dubbing that I've got here, kind of on the top half. Kind of show you what this looks like in a minute. So what I have currently, or what I'm going to be showing you, is about half the size of what I have currently on the table. Okay. Now what I'm going to throw on top of, just very, very sparse layer on top of that, is just some... Um, fluorescent hot pink ice dub as well. Okay, just adds a little bit of contrast, a little bit of flash to it. Again, not very much. Like it's super sparse. This I'm going to lay on, if you imagine a center line on this, it's going to be about 50-50. Then I'm just going to take the bottom half of my ice dub, the purple, and fold it over top. So as you can see here, the ostrich I laid down on one half, and I had another half of ice dub down here, which I just folded over. And if you see here, I've added a little bit of an extra layer on top. That's going to just create a little um, dubbing ball to help support all this ostrich. So now I'm going to take this dubbing loop and open it right up. So I'm going to slide my loop, or my uh, composite materials here, right inside. My thread's going to go 50-50 on that purple ice dub, right in the middle. Now that it's in the loop, I can take a couple clockwise spins here. 
just kind of tighten everything up just a little bit and I can push all this ostrich and kind of separate it so they're not all stacked on top of each other. And this just helps add to the movement of the fly. You kind of orient them all how I want. If there's one that's kind of crooked, I can kind of pull at it, push it, just like so. Hopefully you guys can see that all there. Now I'm going to pinch my loop again and give it a clockwise spin. Get that tucked out of the way there. And now I'm just going to pull everything tight. As you can see there, that loop all kind of spins together. I'm going to take my needle here. I'm going to gently pick at it just to pull out any of that ice dove that doesn't want to be in there. Give it another spin. And we're just going to pick at it again. So now that stuff's really locked in there. It's not going anywhere. I can be quite a bit rougher with it. And you just take your dubbing needle, really pick at it. You can take a brush as well. This gets all the material out of there that doesn't want to be there. Not the end of the world if you pull some of it out. All right, so now I've created a hackle of sorts. I'm just going to stroke everything back. You've seen me do this with water before. Um, kind of just helps to keep everything where it wants to be. So now I'm going to do just one wrap in front of the other right at the front of the shoulder. I'm going to kind of tug down on it a little bit. Be really rough with this stuff. It's not going to it's not going to snap on you. Unless you're using thin thread, that's where you're going to run into problems. That's why I like to use the UTC 140, the 210 Danvilles, 3 aught thread. And Superfly's got the don't know if it's big game thread or super thread. They've got a uh, really, really thick stuff. That stuff's not going to break on you. So there we go. So I'm going to tie off this loop. A couple wraps in behind. A couple wraps in front. Just going to trim that guy away. Just give it a couple more wraps here. Just like we did. Now we're going to pick at it again. Just to kind of anything that's kind of trapped in there. Comes in. The overlapping wraps. I'm just going to kind of straighten out, free up. You can even brush it forward, at least just where that shoulder is. And then we can uh, brush it all back once again. Okay. All right, so we're just gonna wrap back on that a little bit. So we gotta add our head now. You guessed it, one more dubbing loop. And this time I'm gonna end up with my thread up at the front. So this is gonna be finishing this whole thing off. Of course I got dubbing loop in my spinner. Take that, there we go. Now for the head, I'm just going to use some rabbit. So I'm using more of that uh, same grizzly rabbit that uh, I was using before. So I've still got it on the hide. I've got about a little over an inch here. And I'm just going to tuck that inside here. If it wants to cooperate. There we go. I'm going to leave it fairly long and adds a lot of movement to the fly, which is kind of nice. It also adds a bit of weight because the rabbit's going to retain the water. Um, so you can go a little bit lighter on the eyes if you wish, but I find the chum are usually hanging out near the bottom um, of the rivers and the pools. So that little bit of weight's not going to hurt you. Might make it a little bit more difficult to cast, but it gets you in the zone. There you go. i got a bunch of rabbit here. Now I can kind of just move it around just a little bit. Beauty of just tighten up this loop just a little bit. We may not use all of this. So once again, I'm going to spin that dubbing spinner, pull everything tight, get some of the stuff out of the way. Spin it again, make sure everything's nice and tight. There we go. Take your brush to it, make sure nothing's trapped. We're just going to polymer this all forward. So as we wrap it, 
We're going to stroke it all back. One there. Now I'm going to go, this is kind of the tricky part, I'm going to go around the eye. Sorry, how did I do this last time? All right. So I'm going to go around the eye, back to my side, back around my eye. And I'm just going to kind of wrap. And it ends up coming back towards you. Let's just have a look at that there. There we go. Kind of give one more wrap here in front. Really kind of fill that head up. I'm going to take my thread, just kind of weasel it through there. Stroke that all back and kind of wrap in front. Now we're going to get rid of all this excess, like so. Now we got this big jumbled mess of uh, rabbit fur here. Kind of want to pick a little bit of this out. Can do that after. So now I'm just going to wrap it all back. I'm going to create a nice little purple head on this fly. Then we're just going to wet finish it. Like so. Now we can't really see the eyes, so I like to give it a little bit of a haircut here. Just around the eye, just to kind of free it up. Just like so. That kind of gives you an idea of what it's going to look like. A piece there, kind of not cooperating too, too much. There we go. And then, just to polish it all off, a little coat of the Solarez Ultra Thin here, just to kind of seal those wraps up and kind of cure that up. So, there you have it. That's the finished fly. Let's actually, um, I'll kind of readjust the camera here and we'll uh, show you how to actually attach the hook on these. Um, I've done similar flies before, but I haven't actually shown you how to put that hook on. So just give me a sec here. All right guys, so uh, there's our finished fly. Now we just gotta attach the hooks. Like I said, it's a Maruto MS4310 size one, pink UV. I love these hooks, they're super strong. So what we're gonna do here I'm just going to move the vise out of the way a little bit. Is I'm going to slide the hook in place here. Okay. So you just feed it over the uh, the braided loop that we had there, and I'm going to keep it riding hook point up. That's how I like these flies to ride. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this loop. So you always want the loop to be slightly longer than the shank of the hook, just so that you can actually feed it over. So I'm going to open up that loop, I'm going to feed it over, okay, I'm going to give it a half twist, I'm going to feed it, let's do that again. <clears throat> so I've got the loop here, I'm going to fold it over the hook point, give it a half twist, feed that point through that new loop, then I'm going to give it another half twist and feed it back over, okay. Now I've got this loop and a couple twists on the hook shank, hopefully you guys can see that there. What I'm going to do now is with this new loop that I've got, I'm going to feed the tail of the rabbit through that loop. Okay? So just like so. Now my hook point is still down at the bottom here. I'm going to orient it how it should be. So up. I'm going to slowly pull this tighter. And this inevitably is going to trap some of the rabbit. So. I'm going to try to pull as much of it out as I can. I'm just going to continue to pull it. Make sure that everything's roughly the same tautness on the hide there. It's okay if there's a little bit of uh, play there. It's not the end of the world. So what I can do now is I can take my dubbing needle. And I can pull.
pull the stuff out of here. Okay. Out it comes, just like so. And pull it nice and snug. And now, since I've given myself that little bit of wiggle room there, this can sometimes foul a hook. So what I like to do, I like to measure it roughly to where the hook point is. And I'm going to trim the hide to a point. I find this gives a nice taper to the rabbit, or the zonka strip. It just allows it to swim just that little bit better. So just like so. A little point to that. If I grab it by the eyes, I can pull everything tight once again. That's not going anywhere. You can easily take that out should the hook ever bend on you. And there's kind of the finished assembly there from the bottom. And the fly. I kind of just straighten that out a bit. That's what she looks like. And that tail and the hook are going to swing together. So if they're nipping at the tail, you're going to be getting them right in the corner of the mouth every time or in the beak which isn't a bad thing. There you go. Let's head on up and uh, sign out. All right, guys, there you have it, the uh, finished chum dumpster. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, it swims awesome in the water, as you saw at the beginning of the video. Uh, I had two fish pretty much right away on this thing, which was uh, pretty uh, pretty happy about that. Again, I've done it in the pink with the purple um, little accent there, and I've done it the opposite color way, the purple with the pink. Um, great colors for, uh, for chum. You can do it in black and blue for steelhead as well. Uh, or any other that kind of stuff and it swims really nice in the water so we'll uh yeah hope you guys enjoyed we'll uh try to keep them going in a couple in a row here um i know i've got really not a whole lot planned so i should be able to start knocking out some more videos for you guys um as always give us a follow on our facebook page um we're gonna actually have a contest coming up um if you saw the trout feed video you'll know what's going on we got two prize packs to give away so we got a a hat from Hook and Vice, as well as from Halius Outdoors, as well as a, a, a trout bead pack for each of you as well. So I'm still trying to figure out what we're going to do, um, but stay tuned. It should be going in the next week or so. Uh, we want you, you guys to get some beads for that trout fishery that's coming up, uh, or it's going on right now, which is kind of exciting. And it's just going to get better as the chum and the coho start rolling into the rivers, which they're kind of starting to do already. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, hit us up with any feedback. Uh, you can always email us, pros at FridayNightFlies.com. Hit us up on our Facebook page. Leave some message on any of our social media outlets. You guys know where to find us. Um, yeah, until next week. Thanks for joining.